Welcome Puyallup School District families. My name is Colin Henderson. I'm a husband, father of five, author, speaker, and mindset coach. Oh, and I also graduated from Puyallup High School. Now I'm so excited to be launching this series for you and your families and your kids about how mindset matters. This is a video series to work together as a family to formally train your mindset. Our mission is to make mindset training normal and to be proactive, not reactive with our mental health. So, quick question for you. On a scale from one to 10, one low, 10 being high, how stressful are you right now during this time? Question two is, scale of one to 10, how much time are you proactively formally training your mind to be mentally fit for mental wellness, like training, being in the present moment, gratitude, affirmations, resiliency, confidence, staying connected, how habits are formed. Well, the purpose of this training is to give you as a family some examples, some stories, and simple resources you can do to proactively train your mindset. I've given these lessons to companies like Zillow, Nike, Amazon, Microsoft, and I'm so grateful to be sharing these concepts with you. All right, now here's a question we want you to discuss as a family. I'm gonna ask you a question. I want you to pause this video and talk about it as a group. Let's do this together. So, what is your definition of mental toughness? Or how would you define resilience? or grit. Parents, maybe give them some background on what that word means, but how would you summarize and define the words mental toughness? So for me, how I teach mental toughness is a simple equation. If you're taking notes, write it down, please. Have your notebook out, have your pen out, and let's learn. Uh, you can't just think it, but ink it. So the definition of mental toughness is found in this equation. E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. We can't control events in our life like COVID, quarantine, virtual learning. We can't control outcomes, what will happen, but we can control the R and that's our response. How have you been responding to adversity, challenge, and change? Because 100% of outcomes in our life are only 10% of the event and it's 90% how we choose to respond. I'm gonna share with you three stories on what we can learn about resilience and responding from a frog, a singer, and a superhero. Here goes. So the first story I learned from one of my favorite books by Jeff Olson, it's called The Slight Edge. He tells a story of two frogs living on a lily pad on a farm. So there's this pond and Stacy and Steve are the names of these two frogs. And every morning they'd wake up and they see the farmer, Farmer Joe, milk Betsy the cow. And these two frogs were talking, man, I'm tired of eating flies. I would love to hop off of this lily pad away from this pond and go see what that milk tastes like. It's like 89, 90 degrees here in July. I'm thirsty for some milk. So they got the courage one morning. Once Farmer Joe milked Betsy the cow, they hopped off of the pond, hop, 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 and Farmer Joe left, and there was that tin of milk. So they jumped in that tin, and they started drinking the milk. And they were so excited. They, this milk tastes amazing. This is delicious. But they kind of panicked. They recognized that, oh my gosh, this milk is filled so high, we can't reach the bottom. We can't jump out of this tin of milk. We're stuck here. And unfortunately, Steve said, well, at least I'm gonna die happy. He took one last drink of that milk and sank to the bottom. But Stacy was resilient. She said, I'm gonna keep swimming. I can't control what has happened or what will happen, but I can control what I do right now. So her mantra was, I'm gonna keep swimming. I'm gonna keep swimming. And she kept swimming and swimming and swimming. And guess what happens? What happens when you churn milk? She churned that milk into butter. She made it a solid mass and was able to jump out of that tin of milk and to live to fight and see another day. So when things go bad, do you make excuses? Do you just give up? Do you put your arms up like this and say, oh, woe is me? Let's train our mind to go palms down. Everybody as a family, put your palms up. Now go like this, go palms down and say, hey, I can overcome this. I'm in control, let's go. Now the second story, was inspired by one of my favorite singers, Tori Kelly. Now her goal as a young girl was to be a famous musician, to be on MTV, to go on tour, to have albums. And early in her childhood, she got onto Star Search, this talent show, but she lost that 
talent show. Then she got signed as a young teenager to a record deal with a record label, but some didn't work out. She did not even make one album. Then in 2010, she signed up for American Idol, but didn't even make it to the top 24. She got cut from that competition. So over a span of two years, she says, well, I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna learn how to play the guitar. So she took lessons. She started posting videos on YouTube. She practiced her craft, improved her voice singing, and she got found by Justin Bieber's manager, Scooter Braun, and they signed her to a record deal. But it took her two years to make an album, and that album had minimal success. She went back to the lab and said, okay, what is my voice? Who do I wanna sound like? So she made a gospel album. And in 2018, she won two Grammy Awards for that album. So it took her a long time to reach that success and to be a successful artist. And what many people think that success is a straight line. It's from point A to point B, but that's not true. Success is a squiggly line. It's not one true straight path. So we learned from that frog, just keep swimming, keep competing. We learned from Tori Kelly, sometimes it takes patience and use that time to get better and to improve your craft. Now, the last story is, ask this question as a family. Who is your favorite superhero? Who is it? For me, it's simple. It's Tony Stark, Iron Man from the Avengers. And I love the first Iron Man movie because we found Tony Stark, he was kidnapped and put into a cave and they told him, Tony, you need to make us missiles. We're going to put this thing in your chest. If you don't make these missiles in this certain time, you're going to die. So in this dire situation, in this challenging environment, what did he do? He didn't make excuses, palms up. He kept the palms down. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to get better. He invented Iron Man and became a better version of himself. So what are you doing to transform yourself, to not be a victim, but a victor during this time? It's all about mindset. Excellence is not by chance. It's a choice. Now I get it, I have empathy for you. These are challenging times. These are very unique times. It's not ideal. I think of you parents, you know, I'm a father of five. We have two kids going through school right now. As an entrepreneur business owner, I had to completely change my business from a live speaker consultant to now doing everything virtually. So I've had the ups and downs, the anxieties, the doubts, the nights where I wasn't sleeping, but I'm choosing to again, be proactive with training my mind, to be present, to be resilient, to serve others. And part of this Mindset Matters training is we're gonna learn from thought leaders in the Puyallup School District. So let's use this time to learn from some of these leaders now. I think um, the biggest thing with my kids, and I will say um, my kids are pretty fantastic. I'm a very proud mom, um, but I'm honest with them. I don't try to sugarcoat it. Um, even my six-year-old, she will, you know, every day is usually in the middle of the school day. It's, but I'm just not having a good day, mom. You don't know. This is hard. And I'm laughing because I'm sitting on the other side of my computer working while trying to assist her thinking, kid, you don't know what hard is. But, you know, at the same time, I got to get on her level, right? I got to get to her and say, what's hard, babe? Let's stop. So I shut my computer down and I just stop and have a conversation with her. Yeah, I, I like the idea of to look at a situation or an obstacle or a problem and then take a step back and, and, and reframe that challenge. What you're doing is to, hey, so what is bothering you? And let's just talk through it. And the one thing that I teach my athletes is golf. It's always the next shot. You hit a bad one, you cannot let it stay with you because in golf, you know, People probably know this in golf. If you hit a bad shot and you get tense and you pull those muscles together, the next shot is even worse. And I've seen that uh, spiral out of control, even for myself. When I, when I go out and play, you know, you hit a couple good ones and you're in that good groove and you relax. But if you hit that bad one and you tense up, the next shot goes worse and worse and worse. And you see that from small kids to, you see that to the professional golfers. I mean, I watched uh, the masters and you see the, the best in the world who leave a hole and they hit a seven or an eight. And you're like, how could they do that? It is, it's right up top. It's the mind. So true. And I think of this kind of philosophy, do you let the environment dictate your attitude? All right, families, welcome back. And let's do a quick mindset activity. Here's a little mental challenge. How many lines do you see on the screen? I want you to take a quick look. You're probably thinking, Coach Colin, I, I see two lines, one on top, one on the bottom. Well, actually, 
you're missing the line in the middle. And that's where our focus often is. The line on the bottom represents your past. The line on the top represents your future. But the line in the middle represents being in the present moment. A powerful tool to train your mind to be resilient is to be in the present moment. And we know that shame and depression live in the past, where fear and anxiety live in the future, but wellness, peak performance, the best version of you, live in the present moment. So really working on resilience training is training to be in the here and now. I'm gonna give you three activities you can do to train your brain to be resilient and more present. So the first concept I want you to write down if you're taking notes is this. Control what you can control. Many of us major in minor things. We focus on things that we can't control. We let one bad moment turn into a bad day or a bad day turn into a bad week. If we can condition our mind to focus on what we can control, to stay present, to stay neutral, that's a powerful asset for you. And it's this analogy. Boats don't sink from water outside the boat. Boats sink when water gets inside the boat. So starve your distractions, feed your focus, and control what you can control. Here's an activity you can do as a family. So take out a piece of paper and I want you to discuss either as a group or partner up at home with a friend. And I want you to talk about what are things out of my control and write those things down, like how long COVID is lasting, the weather, what my teacher does, what other people think of me, social media. We can't control those things. And evaluate your stress. How much of your stress is geared toward things that are out of your control. Maybe circle some things that are causing stress in your life. And if they're out of your control, identify those. Now, this is where we frame our focus. Now, let's discuss as a group or brainstorm yourself, what are things that you can control? And write those down. Now, the ones that I like to focus on that I teach my kids and the teams that I lead is to focus on your ACE. And ACE is an acronym that stands for attitude, concentration and effort. We can control our attitude every day, how we show up. We can control our concentration, what we choose to focus on when things don't go right to respond the right way and our effort, always giving that high energy and that great effort. So do this quick exercise as a family, as your homework this week. And remember this, control what you can control. Now, the second tool that you can utilize to build resilience is having what I call a reset word or a reset phrase or pressing the reset button. We know this to be true. You know, life sometimes is difficult. It's challenging. Bad things happen. And because the brain is wired to be negative, we're going to have negative self-talk. We're going to have self-doubt. But what separates people who are resilient to not resilient is how they respond when those things come. Remember, E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. So I want you to come up with what I call a reset word. So when you have negative thoughts or you feel doubt, worry, and fear, or something bad happens to you, it's okay to be frustrated for a moment, but don't stay in that state. Choose a different thought pattern. Have a signal and a routine to get back to a more productive thought pattern. For example, um, when I was in high school playing football for the Piat Vikings, my junior season, early in that year, I dropped three touchdown passes and my confidence was really shook up. I would replay those past mistakes and I would tell myself, don't drop it. And I had a bad year that year. So going into my senior season, I had this intuition to come up with a word or a phrase to channel confidence. Because I knew if I wanted to get a scholarship and be all league and all state, I have to perform better. So I told myself, ITM. ITM was an acronym that stands for I'm the man. When I recognized when my internal judge and self-doubt would pop in, I'd have a verbal trigger to get back in control. I wrote ITM on my shirt, under my pads, ITM on my shoes. When I felt doubt and fear, I say, I'm the man. And that was a verbal trigger to quiet that inner critic and to be resilient. And I earned a scholarship after having a great senior year. So discuss as a family, what, what's a word or phrase you can use? And today, my reset phrase is this. And if you're taking notes, please write this down. My reset phrase I say as a public speaker is, 
I'm not defined by this. When I feel doubt, worry, or I make a mistake, I remind myself, I'm not defined by this. It's how I choose to respond. So your homework this week to make mindset matter is to come up with a reset word and press the reset button when you notice doubt, worry, and fear. Now the last mental skill we're gonna train as a family is the resilience muscle of gratitude. The foundation of grit, resiliency, is having a grateful and optimistic lens. The brain science is so clear. At a Cal Davis, Dr. Emmons has researched that people who have a daily gratitude routine reduces cortisol, that's the stress hormone, by nearly 30%. There's research out of Penn that people who wrote down five things of gratitude reduced anxiety and depression. So gratitude really is the practice of thankfulness, of focusing on what you have, not what you don't have. So when you wake up each day, is your mindset trained to open up Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, look in the mirror and focus on what you don't have, comparing yourself to others? Well, let's recondition, rewire our brain to think about through mindfulness, to journal, to write down, to reflect, to feel things of gratitude. So I like to say, lower your threshold for gratitude. You can think about your favorite drink at Starbucks, your favorite meal, your best friend, a pet, you know, walking outside and feeling the wind on your face. So this challenge for wrapping up this resilience training is have a daily gratitude routine. For me, before I wake up, I focus on at least five, six, seven things of gratitude. My healthy wife, my family, get to talk, uh, make a video for the school district, let's go. And in the afternoon, a few times a week, I'll do an afternoon gratitude walk where I just focus on things that I have. Listen, we can't feel anger, bitterness, frustration, and fear, and gratitude at the same time. We can only focus on one thought at a time. So train your mind to proactively focus on what you have, not what you don't have. So when will you get your gratitude reps in? Let's make that a daily priority to train our mind and make mindset matter. So in summary, the definition of mental toughness and resilience is found in this equation, E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. It's how we respond that matters most. It's not what happens to us in life, but it's how we choose to respond. And remember, control what you can control. Have a reset word or reset phrase to get back on track, back into the present moment, and train gratitude every day. That's the foundation of resilience. I care about you guys. Why not you? Why not us? Why not now? And just note this, the body has limits, but the mind is limitless. Mindset matters, and let's train to have a limitless mind.